I mean, I just remember going to the game. It was like the biggest thing in the slate belt. I was very fortunate to, to go 4 0. It was enough that. to win the game, okay? And we ended up being undefeated that year, so we had a little extra. We were ahead 7 to 3, and guess what? The lights went out, so we had to suspend the game and play the next one. This uh, tradition, this Bangor Parnardo game, goes back a long ways. Both communities have a lot of pride in themselves, and they look forward to Bangor and Parnardo. Probably one word sums it up, intensity. First, first football game I ever remember is a Bangor Pinardo football game, and that was in 1967 when I was five years old. Uh, we'd go to bed every night and you would say your prayers, uh, and then my dad would tell us a Bangor Pinardo football story. I think it's really the traditions. Brothers played in it, sisters cheered in it. It's like everybody's been a part of it in the community. I had a great uncle Buck who uh, he had attended 59 straight Pinardo Bangor games. Unfortunately, he actually passed away at the game in the stands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. My grandfather played in the very first Bangor Panardo game. It was my grandfather who played for Bangor was a guard. My dad, who played for Bangor in the in the late '60s, was a guard. Well, when I was in high school, you know, that it was the biggest thing because what do we have? Television had just started. <laughs> I mean, I think as long as we're kind of landlocked out here and, and the world doesn't change too much, I think it'll be a I think it'll be a, a rivalry for a long time. and the communities getting ready for this game is unbelievable. The town would almost shut down for a week and there'd be festivities. And so it was almost like another holiday. The rivalry game, I mean, it's, it's the biggest week in, um, in high school. You, can, you know, you see the, the houses decorated and you see the townspeople excited and it's, um, you know, it's a special feeling. It's Even when people move away, you know, who won the Bangor Pernodra game? You know, because then you have a whole year to brag about it. One of the traditions that started while I was in high school was, were the spaghetti dinners. Today, the spaghetti dinners held right here at the high school, and that's been going on pretty long. Uh, my dad didn't go to school here, but thought that the lineman always kind of got overlooked, and uh, he started sponsoring a lineman award when I was probably about three or four years old. The family has still given it out to this day. At one time, it was played on Thanksgiving Day. I'm sure that added something to it. You got Christmas, you get, you get the holidays, and you got the Bangor Pernardo game. Uh, I thought was was always really neat was seeing the footprints whether they were going from here to Panarjo or Panarjo back, and that pain always seemed to last for a month or two later. I remember all the seniors from the team coming into um, the elementary school that I was at. The bonfire, Spirit Week, Pep Rally. I, that's that's how I remember it. That's how I remember growing up. My favorite moment would have to go back to when our son played. We took great pride in him uh, representing the school and the community. Probably my fondest memories is when I was able to coach my own kids. So I got to experience that as a coach and a parent. My junior year, we played Bangor over at Bangor and uh, we, we beat them and the school bus dropped the whole team off at the bottom of town in Pinardo and the streets were just lined with, uh, with the fans and different, you know, the people came out of the houses and just cheered us on as we walked up, uh, you know, celebrating the victory. It's, you know, being a little kid, seven years old, and looking through the fence at Bangor Park and, and, and emulating the guys. I mean, you're, the end of your season was Bangor, and that taste sat in your mouth for eight months. Whether you won or whether you lost, you had to deal with it. This rivalry has been going on for a hundred years. Is, is really something special. You think about what, what's happened in the world over that hundred years and the conversations that probably happened. When those last seconds run off the clock and you win the ball game, jogging off the field with your teammates, the crowd cheering you. That's one of those memories you never forget. It's been a good rivalry, a great rivalry, and you know that when they talk about Easton Peaberg, they talk about Bernardo Banger. In the beginning of this journey, Tim Egan and I, our goal was to set out to create the best possible experience for both teams. Create an event that our community could remember, something special, something that they can take with them for years to come. Uh, it's just going to be uh, one of the best weeks, I think, in Slate Belt history, and, and people are going to be talking about it for a long, long time. Uh, 33 dive, went for a touchdown. Yeah, I intercepted a pass in the last play of the Bangor Panargo game and ran it back for a touchdown. We've that Thanksgiving. We played Thanksgiving. This is who we are as a community. This rivalry, it's a, it's a great thing.